Hi, this is Trey from SoFly. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Google Shopping feed out of your WooCommerce products using WP All Export. So let's go to All Export, New Export. We'll select WooCommerce products from the drop down here. Down here we have a filtering options section if you only wanted to export certain products, but for this example I'm going to export all of my products. So let's go to the next page. Now we need to go down here to export type, select feed, and pick Google Merchant Center product feed from the drop down. Okay, let's start with basic product information. So for the item title section, this might look different later. We're looking at ways to make this a little bit easier. But if you're selling variable products with an attribute like collar, like mine, then you'll probably want to uncheck this so that the parent product title isn't used and use a custom data title instead. So we'll drag in the title here and we'll drag in the collar attribute as well. Google treats each product the same, so it's important if you're selling variable products to set a title that will differentiate them. So we're going to use the product description we have set up in WooCommerce. We'll use the permalink. We'll use the featured image. Okay. Then we have the advanced options here. Item ID, condition, mobile link. Okay, availability and price. You can set a custom data price if you want. If you need to adjust the prices, you can do it there. Sale price, availability. Go to advanced options. If you're using a different currency, you can set it here. Availability date, all this stuff. Okay, now onto the categories. So we're gonna use WooCommerce's product category and we need to map all of our categories to the proper Google categories so that our feed is accepted. So I have decorations, picture frames, and then I have all kinds of different animal picture frames for my products. So let's start mapping them here. For decorations, we'll type in decor. Here we go. And for picture frames, we will type in picture frames. And under decor, there we go. And when I select this, you'll see that the picture frames cascades down to all of my subcategories, which makes it very easy. We don't have to map any of those individually. We can just leave them there and they'll all go to picture frames. Same thing with the mugs. We have a bunch of different animal mugs. So let's go ahead and start mapping the section for home and living. We'll go home and garden. Drinkware, type in drink. Where? There we go. And then mugs. and put that under drinkware. And same thing here, you can see all of my animal mugs went into the proper mugs category. Okay, so let's go to unique identifiers. So the unique identifiers are what Google uses to classify your products, make your ads work better, and just generally make it easier for your customers to find your products. The GTIN would need to be set if your items have a barcode, that's where you'd find the GTIN. And then there's the manufacturer's part number, which we'll use our SKU for that. And ours are custom-made products, so we'll set the brand to SoFly. All right, now we'll go to the attributes and item grouping. So if you have an attribute that's one of these names, like color or size, it'll automatically select it here. Uh, mine, I got to select product color here. So if one of the attributes, we don't have a size or gender in these. The advanced options we'll go down. I do have an age group, but it's not actually an attribute. So we'll go down to custom data and we'll go to taxonomies. I'm using a custom taxonomy for this. So we'll drag in the age groups and now we're set. Move down the shipping. We don't need to set anything here unless we want to override the shipping settings in our Google Merchant Center. So we can just skip over that. You can set the shipping label whenever you need to. Advanced attributes, if you're selling packages, you can set the multi-pack here. Um, AdWords and shopping campaigns, you can redirect custom labels for your campaign. Then you have the unit prices section. Um, additional attributes, you get the expiration date, energy efficiency class, promotion ID. We don't need to set any of this in this example. So let's go ahead and continue. And we will name this SoFly product feed. And we'll go ahead and run the export. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while this finishes. 
All right, this is done. So now we have instructions on what we need to do to set this up in our Google Merchants dashboard. So let's go ahead and click this link to move over there. And this is loading, okay. So let's go back and see on two, we'll click the big blue button to create a new feed. So let's click that. This is a test feed, products. We'll select the United States. There we go. Feed name, we'll name this SoFly Products. Continue. Okay, let's go back to the instructions. On page two, select scheduled. So we'll go back here and do scheduled fetch and continue. For the file name, use whatever you want for the file name. So we'll just put SoFly Products there. And we'll need this URL as well. So, SoFly Products. Fetch time, we'll set this to something like 2 a.m. And we'll paste in the URL. And click Save. Successfully created. There it is. Let's go in here and go ahead and fetch it. Let's see what it's doing. And it's processing. Okay, I'm going to pause the video while this processes. And we're back, and everything's processed. We got no errors, everything's successful, so we're good to go here. So the next thing we could do is we could set up WP All Export to automatically export our updated product feed every day so that we can match this schedule over here. If we look, Google's going to fetch this at 2 a.m. every day. So if we set WP All Export to automatically export our products at, say, 10 p.m. every day, then when Google fetches this, they're going to get updated product information and it'll go straight to Google. We'll include a link in the description below that explains how to set up cron jobs for WP All Export. Thank you very much for watching.